Welcome back to my no-name channel. I'm Bruce and this is another Bali COVID-19 update for July 25th, 2021. And uh, waiting for news on the restrictions and we'll see what happens sometime today. Okay, what are the numbers? Well, not really good news again. Uh, Numbers are uh, 1,057 new cases today in Bali, um, although that is a big drop from yesterday, which was 1,400 something. Uh, so I guess that's good news. Um, seven day average is uh, over 1,000, 1,069. The total for Indonesia as a whole, 45,416. Well, so we're a long way from the 10,000 that the government wanted to get to before they start to open things up. And testing, total tests yesterday were 180,000 and with a 25.2% positive rate. Uh, okay, that's not good. And vaccination numbers, well, we hit 3 million. 3 million, so we are at 70%, the magic 70%. That's for one dose. Uh, second dose, there's 791,103, and that's 18% of the population. And yesterday, 17,699 new doses were given. So, vaccinations are ongoing, and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. So, numbers uh, for Yesterday, 1,057. In Bali, recovery, 696. Deaths, 25. That's down from a couple days of in the 30s. And the current uh, active cases, 9,650. So that's not going down. Okay, not good. And out of the 1,057 new cases, all of them are Indonesians, no foreigners. And out of the 11,000 cases that we've had over the last week, zero foreigners. How is that happening? I don't know. Uh, 890 of the 1,057 cases were local transmissions, 162 from domestic uh, travelers, and five from international travelers. And cases were distributed as follows. Dempasar 361. Badung 184, Bulang 124, Tabanan 123, Gyanyar 77, Jambrana 72, Bangli 54, Klungkung 32, Karnasam 23. Oh, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> okay. And according to an article in the Bali Post, Bulang is the location for the most deaths this week. Uh, so that is not good for us here. I'm in bullying. So these are not good numbers. Uh, not good at all. Um, we're up over a thousand again, and we had uh, 1,400, we had 1,200 this week. So uh, things are not getting better in Bali. The numbers go down a little, then they go up, and there's questions about testing, uh, how much testing is being done, and uh, there's a couple of, of segments on testing coming up. So we've gotten used to calling this the uh, micro restrictions, uh, the emergency restrictions over the last uh, few weeks, but uh, this article, uh, <laughs> I don't, I'm laughing just because I don't know, if you change the name, does that make it go away? The government seeks to cur simplify curbs uh, with another name change. So, Coordinating Minister for uh, Maritime Affairs and Investment, Pak Luhut, said this week that the President has asked that the emergency curbs be given new name. And he said, Pak President has asked us not to use the terms PPKM Micro or PPKM Darurat or use, and use the simpler PPKM Level 4 instead. So, in the future, We'll call the restrictions PPKM levels one, two, three, and four. Okay, um, that's getting some uh, some laughter, not just me, but uh, around Indonesian social media um, about 
What, what is this supposed to mean? Is this making things simpler? Uh, maybe. Under the new four-tier system, uh, each city or agency must enforce uh, restrictions based on the level of risk, with level four being the, the most stringent. And according to Jody Maradi, a uh, spokesperson for the Coordinated Maritime Affairs and Investment Minister, the risk level is determined by each region's transmission rate, health system response capacity, as well as the psychological condition of the people. Now, I'm not sure how do they, how do they judge the psychological condition of the people. <clears throat> the first two indicators are based on guidelines from WHO. So level four classification, what is that? So it's meant for regencies or cities with 150 confirmed cases or more per 100,000 people per week. A hospital rate of more than 30 patients per 100,000 per week. And a mortality rate of more than five deaths per 100,000 per week. So this is done on a weekly basis. Regions scoring more than 15% and its testing positivity rate, more than 80% uh, for its hospital bed occupancy rate, that's the BOR I've talked about before, and tracing capacity of less than five people per COVID-19 case also qualify for level four curbs. And what about level three? Level three, 50 to 100 cases, two to five deaths, and a hospital rate of 10 to 30 patients per 100,000. Uh, other indicators, positivity rate between 5 and 15%, tracing capacity of 5 to 14 people, and a BOR of 60 to 80%. Levels 1 and 2 are des designated for cities or regencies with sufficient response capacity, which is indicated by a positivity rate below 5%, tracing capacity of more than 14 people per case, and a BOR of less than 60 under level four restrictions, all schools and offices and non-essential sectors must be shuttered. All shops and malls and traditional markets that do not sell staple foods or daily essentials must also remain closed for the period of curves. Restaurants and food vendors are only allowed to serve takeout or delivery while regional governments are asked to close all entertainment venues in public parks. Pak Luhut said that most regencies and cities across Java and Bali fell under level three or level four restrictions. We were under level three restrictions, uh, as far as I know, um, but we'll see what's gonna happen in the press conference, which is supposed to happen sometime soon. It's uh, five o'clock Sunday night here, Sunday afternoon. Pak Luhut also announced plans to gradually ease restrictions in several regions with lower risk levels starting tomorrow. <clears throat> he said, we saw lower levels of public mobility after implementing the PPKM Darurat between July 3rd and 20th, which resulted in fewer daily cases and decreasing BOR. If the improvements persist, we will gradually lift and relax restrictions in several regions. And I'll be talking about the numbers in just a second. So should we relax restrictions or not? Well, <clears throat> not my decision, not your decision. Uh, we know where the decision is. It's in Jakarta. And we'll see what happens. Based on what is about to follow, based on what <laughs> follows, um, medical experts are saying, no, don't relax the restrictions yet. We'll have to see what the government's gonna do though. Um, early hint is that the restrictions are going to be extended until August 8th, although it's not official yet, and so I'm waiting to get the official news on that. We'll see what's going to happen. Vaccines and vaccinations continuing to go on around the country, um, and of course, especially here in Bali, for those of us that live here. And as I said, we're at 70% now for the first dose, not the second dose. Uh, we've got a long way to go before we get to 70% with the second dose. And so uh, what about the situation with the vaccines? Do we have enough? Take a look at this story. What about the vaccines? Vaccinations continuing to be ongoing. And do we have vaccines? Well, good news, the Japanese government, despite uh, their own problems, uh, has donated uh, AstraZeneca 
vaccine to Indonesia and that donation was sent to Bali, arrived in, in Java and then was sent over here for us because the government is still pushing, pushing, pushing to get us above the magic herd immunity number. And we received a total of 173,200 doses of AstraZeneca. So thank you, Japan. Um, well, we need that. What about oxygen? So Bali has an oxygen crisis. According to the head of the Bali Provincial Health Office, Dr. Katut Swarjaya, and I talked about him before, um, Bali's had a lack of oxygen since July 14th. And with the surge in cases that have happened this week, um, with record numbers almost daily, the situation of oxygen has reached crisis levels. Uh, he said that the oxygen supplier, PT Samator, uh, had guaranteed Bali enough oxygen for three months, but due to the surge in cases in Java, Bali supply has been disrupted. At Bali Mandara Hospital on Thursday, they were out of oxygen, even though they were treating 116 patients and the ER was full. And on social media, uh, there were foreigners. Of course, we have new, no foreigner cases uh, reported, but there are foreigners in the hospital sick right now. Uh, so I don't know what happens to them, why they're not being reported. But uh, the woman was talking about her husband, uh, very sick, a fever of over 41. They took him, she took him to the hospital. He was refused at two hospitals. They said, we're sorry, we don't have any oxygen. We can't treat him. Went to a third. They said, yes, we can treat him. But he had to wait for 24 hours in the uh, waiting room until a bed opened up for him. So things are, things are getting bad here. Currently, temporary measures uh, are being implemented, such as searching the island for hospitals that have uh, extra supply of oxygen in stock, postponing non-essential actions, and checking oxygen installation lines to make sure there are no leaks. Bali's been working with the Ministry of Health uh, in order to get uh, oxygen from other sources around Indonesia, uh, including Sulawesi and uh, parts of some hospitals in Java. And just how bad are things here? Well, uh, this story. Indonesia, raging pandemic offers fertile ground for new variants. So according to experts from around the world, the speed and scale of the coronavirus outbreak here in Indonesia has created a perfect breeding ground for potential new super strain that could be even more contagious and deadly than the Delta variant. According to Diki Budiman, uh, an Indonesian epidemiologist who's uh, working at Australia's Griffith University he said new variants always appear in regions or countries that cannot control outbreaks. He added, the World Health Organization says if more than 5% of tests come back positive, the outbreak is uncontrollable. In Indonesia, it's been higher than 10% for 16 months at the start of the pandemic. Now it's higher than 30%. So you can imagine how high the possibility for Indonesia to create a new variant or super variant of COVID-19. Oh, this is a this is an interesting article. The link is below. I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but it talks about what variants are um, and what a variant of concern means and what could, could potentially happen here. So what about the claim that the numbers are falling? Well, they are. But what about those numbers? Uh, in the, an article called Dissecting Jokowi's Flattening COVID-19 Curve Claim, um, the author takes a look at what's actually happening with the numbers. And so we know that last week the emergency restrictions expired. Uh, on Sunday, on Monday, they were renewed for five days. And so tomorrow they're over again. Uh, the 26th is the end. What's the government going to do? Well, it's, Jacoby has hinted at loosening up the restrictions based on falling numbers. He said uh, a week ago, uh, Alhamdulillah, after the enforcement of the emergency PPKM, the data suggests new cases in hospital bed, bed occupancy rate are dropping. So he said that on the 20th. And we've had 
almost a week since then. Well, we had a week since, almost a week since then. Today is the 25th. Um, and so while the number of cases has indeed decreased uh, over the week nationally, not in Bali, uh, as I've been talking about, we hit record numbers this week several times, uh, and we're up over a thousand, unfortunately, seemingly regularly. Um, the drop in numbers uh, is also aligned with few specimens being tested as reported in the Tempo article. So Tempo saw that on days when the number of confirmed, confirmed cases decreased, so did the number of specimens tested. So let's take a look at the numbers and here are the numbers. So you can see from the numbers here, the confirmed cases go down as the number of specimens tested go down. What does this mean? Oh, it's similar to Donald Trump. Uh, test less, you get less numbers. No problem. Maybe you can figure this one out. And so we're all waiting to find out what's gonna happen on Monday. Uh, maybe it'll happen Sunday night, but based on the way that the last announcement was made, the last circular, it's going to come at the last minute. Um, so this segment, emergency PPKM relaxation plan, government urged to use valid data. So this is another one. A number of people have been bringing up that the government's data is, well, partially true. Numbers are dropping, but they're not explaining completely why they're dropping. So public policy observer uh, Pak Negroho reminded the government to use data with strong and clear validity before relaxing the COVID-19 policy um, for the emergency PPKM. And so he said the government has been using the dropping numbers in cases and bed rate as a basis to relax the policies, which is true, uh, but uh, he said, if tests are lowered, the cases will decrease. He said he did not want to discredit the government. However, he reminded the government that policies should be based on rigorously tested data. And according to this article, it is known that the number of COVID tests uh, in Indonesia decreased recently on July 18th. For example, number of tested people fell to 138 complementing the decrease of daily cases to 44,721. So we know that there appears to be a correlation here between the, the samples being tested and the drop in numbers, the number of people that are being tested, the drop in numbers, and our next segment, Lewitt calls corona cases down. This is data since the beginning of emergency PPKM. And so the coordinating minister for maritime affairs and investment, Pak Lewitt, said that the number of new COVID cases has decreased since the start of the emergency PPKM. He said, I asked my friends, even though there's a decrease compared to the first week of implementing PPKM, the downward trend in mobility and activity must be maintained. He said this yesterday. He did admit that the death rate continues to be high and he argued that maintaining a decrease in mobility and activity uh, will work to continue the downward trend in new cases and that this data can be used to evaluate the reduction of the level of PPKM. And specifically, he was talking about DJI DJ, DJI, that's my drone, uh, DKI Jakarta, Central Java, and East Java. And yet another article on the drop uh, of cases and the testing, Jakarta Deputy Governor denies drop in COVID-19 cases due to less tests. So Jakarta's Deputy Governor Ahmed Riza Patria said the drop in the number of cases of COVID-19 was not because of lower testing. He claimed that the number of tests remain high. Well, according to the data in the Tempo article, on Sunday, July 18th, there were 9,128 new cases in Jakarta for 33,772 tests. And I'll 
the data is right here. I'll put it here. I'm not going to go over each, but by by Thursday, we had 7,000 cases, 7,058 for 28,512. So you can see looking at these, these numbers that the number of new cases indeed has dropped. So has the number of tests. So despite this, the, the deputy governor said the decline in cases was due to successful enforcement of the emergency public activities restrictions. Okay, so this is the government's line. Uh, this is their position that the restrictions have been working. That's why we have a drop in numbers. They don't mention the drop in cases, although the deputy governor here said testing remains high. But according to government websites, there has been a decrease. What about the restrictions? Are they going to be lowered, uh, relaxed uh, tomorrow or not? Well, uh, according to the WHO, they urge tougher restrictions uh, as Indonesia's sinking of, of moles easing PPKM. So Thursday, a WHO urged Indonesia to implement stricter restrictions in order to control the high number of COVID cases and deaths. Uh, this is in response to suggestions from Pak Jokowi that things may be toned down starting tomorrow. According to the WHO's most recent situation report, uh, they said that strict implication of public health and social restrictions were necessary to combat the start, sharp rise in infections in 13 of Indonesia's 34 provinces. WHO said Indonesia's daily positivity rate, the proportion of people tested who are infected, has averaged 30% over the past week, even as case numbers have fallen and a level above 20% means very high. All but one of Indonesia's provinces have a positivity rate above 20%, according to the WHO, except for Aceh, which is at 19%. So, let's take a look and see. We've talked about the numbers. We've talked about the vaccines. We've seen the arguments to extend the restrictions. Let's see what's happening on the ground right now in Bali. Numbers are increasing here in Bali. So Bali government eases some COVID restrictions as province reports record new daily cases. Well, when this article came out, the new daily cases was 1,111. And today, Saturday evening, we had 1,407, I believe, um, when I read the report on Jackie Pomeroy's COVID-19 sites, so um, numbers continue to go up. Uh, obviously, it's not a good sign for us. But with the, uh, with the rising numbers, so there was a feeling that restrictions are going to be eased uh, starting on Monday, uh, but some were actually relaxed this week. And so what was that? Non-essential businesses, which were supposed to be completely closed, um, and it was followed by some businesses and not others, allowed to be open with 25% capacity and stay open till 9 p.m. Um, and there were some changes for restaurants and other types of food sellers. So the operating hours were changed from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. They were able to stay open till 9 p.m. And in a somewhat confusing statement that said deliveries were be to be prioritized, some restaurants took that to mean that dining in was okay because as soon as the new circular came out, Facebook had a number of restaurants saying, dine in beginning tomorrow and take out and deliveries as well. We're waiting to see what is going to happen Sunday night or Monday and what the government has in mind. Uh, Indonesia severely restricts foreign arrivals on July 23rd. So a couple of, you know, it was actually last night, today's Saturday. Um, so beginning um, today, uh, new travel restrictions, and we've actually had these travel restrictions before, they're just being implemented again, um, are going to restrict who can come in. Uh, and according to the head of airport uh, immigration office, 
Romy Budianto, as of tomorrow, four nationals that fail, fail to meet the requirements will be immediately sent back home to their countries. So the regulation is you are allowed to come in if you have the following visas, diplomatic and work visas, diplomatic resident permit and official resident permit holders, limited stay permits, permanent resident permits, humanitarian and health related visits that have obtained official recommendation from state institutions and conveyance crews. And anybody that does not fit into one of those categories will not be allowed. So, for example, the people that have been flooding into Bali on the, the work visa, the B211, uh, even if you have it and you're outside the country, you're not allowed to come in. If you're here already, yeah, no problem. Uh, but if you're outside, even though it's been issued, you are not allowed to come in. How long is this going to be in effect? Until further notice. Uh, if you are outside and you want to come in on a B211 or you've got a B211 already, uh, keep in touch with the immigration, either their website or their social media, one of their social media outlets like Facebook or Instagram. With the situation the way that it is, Hospitals full, oxygen in short supply, deaths going up uh, around the country and in Bali, record number of cases. Thousands of Japanese nationals depart from Sukarno Hatta Airport. So during the eight day period from July 3rd to July 21st, uh, 2,070 Japanese citizens left Indonesia, but according to San Fernando, the airport immigration spokesman, this is not an exodus. He said people are leaving for a variety of reasons, such as the pandemic, expired work contracts, and more. He noted that 152 Japanese nationals arrived in Indonesia during the same time period. So, 2,070 left, 152 arrived, and they left because of the pandemic. For one, as he said, um, seems like an exodus to me. Um, but I guess that's a matter of semantics. He uh, also refuted rumors of a max, mass exodus of Taiwanese. He said there were only dozens of Taiwanese leaving, not thousands, as rumors said. Okay, I haven't heard those rumors. Um, there are um, foreigners leaving and uh, Australians organizing trips, chartering planes themselves, paying extremely high prices. Uh, although this has now been um, debated on social media because some people said, well, Aussies really want to go home. No, no, it's just a couple of Aussies, not everybody. We want to come. I'm not sure why people want to keep coming here when the situation is the way that it is. We know that the Japanese are leaving, the Taiwanese have left, some social uh, media influencers have gone as well, and the number of foreigners coming in is being severely reduced. And what about foreigners behaving badly? Yes, there still are some. Uh, Russian family deported for overstaying their visa. So Russian family, three people, mom, dad, and a child, uh, were deported for overstaying their visa. They were caught in Sanur and given the administrative sanctions of deportation and blacklisting. The immigration department continues to be working on this. They're serious about enforcing the regulations. And so, uh, with their stepping up the enforcement, foreigners should remember that we're guests here and stick to the rules. Okay, it's time for the wrap up. And I've been waiting to do this. I've been waiting to see what was gonna happen with the restrictions. Are they gonna be extended or were they gonna be ended? And I just got done watching the president on TV. The restrictions are going to be extended for another week until August 2nd. So starting tomorrow, 
uh, the 26th until August 2nd and then we'll see what happens then. The president said there will be some modifications in terms of uh, extended opening hours and extra capacity and this is going to be dealt with at the regional level and so we'll have to wait and see what the governor says tomorrow. Good news? Um, mm, so-so, kind of expected, uh, although uh, some people <laughs> thought that uh, they would be ended and I have to admit that uh, I, I thought that that was where he was going to go to. But he's playing it safe, the president is playing it safe, he's going to extend it another week. And we have August 17th coming up soon, August 17th, the uh, uh, anniversary of Indonesian independence. And so let's see what happens when we get there. Okay, so the wrap-up then. Uh, the big thing is that the, the restrictions are extended and so what that means tomorrow when the governor releases his statement. So what have we got? We've got high numbers in Bali. We still have high numbers uh, around the country. We had 45,000 yesterday and in uh, Indonesia, throughout Indonesia, we had uh, over a thousand in Bali and so this is not going down at this point we're out of oxygen and I was just just before now just a few minutes ago I was reading on the social media on uh, Jackie Pomeroy's COVID-19 uh, site uh, from a person who said she took her her husband to the hospital and went to one full went to another one full found another one and this is a this is a regular story now and i was checking on the hospitals here there's a website uh, where you can go and you can check on the hospitals and see for uh, what bed numbers are available and out of the seven hospitals that they had for bulawang three of them were full uh, including the one that i would go to i would prefer to go to bali med and the other four had from one to four beds empty. So we have a problem with, with oxygen. We have a problem with beds, food. Uh, I haven't even gone into that on this one. There is a lot of, a lot of people working on the streets now, giving food away to people. That's great. One of the bad things about this is that I've seen these uh, videos of these and people are just packed together uh, and I I guess if you if you want food you want to make sure you get some and so uh, I can't fault the people for that but uh, if somebody has coronavirus there boy I mean it's just uh, waiting to happen with some infections so that's not good as I said Indonesia is closed to the B211 visitors you need to have a kitas or a kitap to get in or be a diplomat and i discussed which which visas are allowed in so that's gonna that looks like that's gonna be extended until this is over so if you wanted to get into bali if you have a b211 uh i would cancel it um i would try to get I would see if I can get it extended somehow, and I'm not sure how that works. Uh, the immigration uh, has a, a good website, and they apparently respond to people. I would check with them. If you've got tickets coming in now, really, uh, you know, the safest thing is to wait. As I've said many times, I would wait until December. We've got the restrictions going on until August 2nd. I would not be surprised unless there's a big dip in the numbers suddenly. I would not be surprised to see it extended again, especially after we get the results of Idol Ada. There were people moving back and forth during Idol Ada just the other day, and a lot of ceremonies in Bali. So we don't really know what's going to happen what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks here. This could get, uh, it could get worse. And so 
yeah, we're just gonna have to hang in. So, no good news if if you want to come to Bali. No good news uh, if you have friends here, Balinese friends, Indonesian friends. Um, they are most likely hurting at this point, and this is another week of. Yeah, it's going to be another week of economic hardship. Uh, even if they res they open up the restrictions a little bit, uh, let people keep their businesses open for another hour. But uh, we're still not we're still not ready to open up. Not with these numbers like this. Not with the lack of oxygen, the hospital beds, um, people dying at home. I'm afraid not. Uh, I'm afraid another week of not very good news. This is this is a tough time for Indonesia. We're you know, frequently talked about now in the international press as being the epicenter of the virus. And until we get this thing under control somehow, we get more people vaccinated. You know, Bali is Bali is doing great in terms of vaccinations, but even so, you look at what's happening with our numbers. Uh, but Indonesia as a whole is, what, 8%? Uh, that's really, really low. And so we're just going to have to take things day by day at this point. Uh, I hate to say that, but uh, that's, that's where we're at. Um, if you're here in Bali, stay safe, stay at home. Uh, unless you have to go out, don't go anywhere. Restrict your movements as much as possible. That's what the government wants. The less you go out, the less you interact with people, the less chance you have that you're going to get infected or if you have the coronavirus and you don't know about it, that you're gonna infect other people. If you've only been vaccinated once, you're, you're not fully covered uh, like me. So play it safe, wear a mask, follow the rules. If you're, if you're not here, if you want to come. So I'm a cautious person. I would, I would wait until December, even if we open up. Opening up in August seems highly, highly unlikely now. Maybe September, uh, but if you're coming and you want to have a good vacation uh, and have everything running smoothly and everything open, I would wait. I would wait until December. You know, we keep looking for the good news and, um, well, it's just just not happening right now, unfortunately. Um, but, well, let's see how the next week goes with the extended restrictions. Thanks for viewing. Stay safe. Follow rules if you're here. Be kind to someone today. See you next time.